are you are going to learn how to cook a corned beef and create three different menus using the same piece of meat. One menu for breakfast, one for lunch, and one for dinner. And the other thing that we're going to start to do in Sadie's Kitchen is to use some of my favorite appliances. And one of the appliances that we will be using today is my trusty Instant Pot over here, which I love, 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 love. I love it. So let's start talking about this corned beef. You know, today um, you can find corned beef because it's March. It's almost March 17th and you can find corned beef anywhere, every store you go in. Now, why is this called corn beef. First of all, it has nothing to do with corn. <laughs> You're going to be surprised to find this out, but the term corn comes from the English and it refers to the small particles of corn-like uh, pieces of salt that you use to brine this piece of meat, which is really a brisket. Um, you cure it with a lot of salt. And I mean a lot of salt. There is almost, um, let's see, there's 1,400 milligrams of salt in uh, four ounces of meat, corned beef. But I'm gonna show you how we can get rid of all of that salt, so just hang with me. So the corned beef is a prime cut, it's a large piece of uh, the breast of the lower chest of the beef cow and it's tough and uh, it's tough all throughout because it has really tight connective tissues that form together and that's why you see it a lot cooked for a long time a beef brisket is um you know we have beef brisket barbecue and it cooks slowly um a whole beef brisket weighs about 10 pounds, but the piece I have today weighs about five pounds. Now, why did I get five pounds? Um, because when you cook this, and my daughter always says, I am not ever going to cook another corned beef because it turns into nothing after I spend all that time cooking it. Well, it turns into nothing because if you cook it and there's a lot of fat in it, uh, it's going to cook down to about half the size of what you purchase. This particular cut of meat, as you can see, I love it uh, from Costco's because it does not have that big old piece of fat that you usually see uh, on corned beef in some of our other grocery stores. So you're getting uh, a pure nice cut of brisket corned beef here. Okay, now, there are three different ways you can cook corned beef. You can braise it, which means that you will put it in the oven, wrap it in some foil, put your seasonings on it, a little mustard, uh, corn, uh, ground mustard, and the seasoning packet. There, there's a seasoning packet in here that comes with it. Put it on it, put it in the foil, and let it cook for four or five hours. You can cook it on the stove top in a pot with some water, cover it up, and let it cook on the stove top for about another maybe two to three hours. You can also put it in a crock pot, slow cooker, go to work, let it cook all day. It's gonna take nine to 11 hours. I don't have time for that. And you don't have to have time for that anymore as long as you have an Instapot. And that's what we're going to be using today, which is going to take probably about two hours to cook this brisket. Um, and that's the exciting part about using an Instapot. If you see here in front of us, we, um, we have several things here. We have our sides that we're going to have with our beef brisket. We have a nice cabbage here with lots of greenery on it. And then we have potatoes and carrots. And I have some cornbread in the oven cooking that we're going to eat with this. So while we're doing this, um, I want to share with you what we'll do because the brisket, remember I told you that there's a lot of salt in this brisket. It is recommended that once you take this out of the package, it's not on the package, but 
it is recommended. You're not going to lose any flavoring out of this uh, corned beef if you rinse it off. But basically what you want to do is let it sit in some warm water, uh, cover it up for about 30 minutes so it can extract and pull all that sodium and salt out of it. I, for one, don't need all the sodium and the salt, but that's something that you want to do. Uh, in our water, when we place our, our corned beef in the Instant Pot, we're going to add some minced garlic, some bay leaves, some peppercorns, and my favorite, smoked paprika. Now, if you want, if you do think that this little packet, sometimes the little packets are very small and it's not enough seasoning in it. So that's why I'm adding more seasoning to mine. But at my favorite uh, spice store, which is Penzi's, uh, you can buy just about any kind of spice that's ever been made in any country there. But you, uh, I got this large bottle of corned beef spice there uh, a while back. Never used it, never opened it, but I'm going to get an opportunity today because I have my brisket here. Now, I'm going to share something with you on um, how we're going to take this brisket and do our breakfast and our lunch. So stay with me, don't leave. Right now, I'm going to take this out of the package, get it soaked for 30 minutes, and then I'm gonna put it in the Instapot with the spices, and I'll show you how to turn this on once I get it in there. Then I'm going to make my sides and come back once the brisket is ready. Between braising, stove top, and slow cooker, we are going to use the Instant Pot. And we have our brisket uh, in our liner that's going in our Instant Pot with all the spices. And mm, it smells so good. Okay, this is so simple, y'all. You can do this if you don't have an Instant Pot. Get you one, save yourself some time. Drop the liner off in the Instant Pot. And your control panels are on the top. When you put the top on it, as you can see, you have two things here. That's all you gotta do once you put it in there. You, it's either gonna be on venting and sealing. 95% of the time, you're gonna put it on sealing. And when um, it's ready, if you leave it in there long enough, it'll make itself bent. So all you gotta do, put this, did you hear that? Put the top on it. Okay, I want to cook this for about two hours. So I'm going to hit meat. We got soup, broth, meat, stew, bean, chili, cake, eggs, slow cooker, and a whole bunch of other stuff over here. But we're just going to do meat today. And it's already on two hours. And you don't even have to hit a start button because it's going to hit on by itself. You do absolutely nothing. Walk away from the Instant Pot. Walk away. It has never hurt anybody in America. Get yourself an Instant Pot. You're going to love it. And we are going to love how tender it's going to make this corned beef. I'm going to get my sides ready. We'll come back and take this out of the Instant Pot and Meet you back at the cooking table. And as you can see, our five pound corned beef is probably looking like it's maybe two and a half pounds, maybe three pounds. But we're gonna cut this, we're gonna slice it. It's had time to rest and we're gonna cut against the grain. There we have it. It is so tender, guys. See that steam and it's steaming? This melts in your mouth. I'm telling you, you need an Instapot for your meats.
All right, we have dinner fit for a king. Our corned beef turned out so tender. It will melt in your mouth. The Instant Pot did the job. And our buttery um, carrots glazed in honey are awesome. And then we have our parsley buttered potatoes, our carrots, and as you saw that cornbread was cooking uh, in the oven, it smells so good. And now we have a little plate to taste. But before we do that, I wanna share with you that it is March and March is the time when you can find corned beef in the stores and it's always on sale. So that's your assignment for this week. Go buy some corned beef Matter of fact, buy two or three of them, put them in your freezer so you won't have to pay, uh, or at least you will save a few pennies. This dinner is going to be excellent. Um, I hope you learned a lot about cooking con corned beef. We're going to taste this and see what it tastes like. I would love to let you taste it. Look at that. Excellent. So... Mm, it's so tender. It's so tender. And there's not a whole lot of salt in it. So you really got to rinse it off or let it sit in some water so it won't be too salty. Now, we got all this corned beef. And then this is our dinner. But that, like I said, there are several things you can do with it. I'm going to come back and show you how to make breakfast and lunch using the leftover corned beef. Stay tuned. Well, I hope you enjoyed dinner with corned beef and now it's morning time, so good morning. And we're going to throw a breakfast together right quick. Dinner was great um, with the corned beef and we had leftover corned beef. So now we're going to uh, put a breakfast together right quick. We have our chopped up corned beef this morning then we have uh, some onion and bell pepper, and then some leftover potatoes. Got a little cheese here and three eggs. So this is gonna go quickly. So watch me. And I'll leave this recipe down in the description box. In the meantime, it's morning time, and I know that you all subscribe to Sadie's Kitchen. If you didn't already, Please do so. Subscribe to Sadie's Kitchen. Put that onion in there. We're going to mix all of this together. And that delicious corned beef. I think what I want to do is mix this, this potatoes and onions all together first. This is so easy, guys. And then throw your corned beef in there. Mix it together with the onion and potatoes. Stir it up. I'm going to put the cheese in here also. There you go. We got it all mixed up. And now, bring our souffle dishes over here. I'm making two. You can make as many as you want. And I'm putting this in a souffle dish, but you could also put these, make it really quickly and put it, put it in uh, muffin pans and have little muffins with it. But if you put it in the muffin pans, you could um, lace the bottom of it with uh, maybe cut a biscuit, canned biscuit in half and lace the bottom of the muffin tin with it. Now, I am going to create um, a little hole in the middle here. I'm just gonna push all of that down. And this is gonna be delicious. Put, um, I have a cracked egg and I'm gonna put it off in there. Then I have another cracked egg. All right, 
that's for my hubby. I only want one egg. So I'll make me a little hole there. The egg in there. And guys, my favorite spice, smoke paprika. Put a little bit on top. Put a lot of bit on top. There you have breakfast already ready. I might would sprinkle a little bit of parsley on top of this to give it a little green color on the top. And this is gonna be delicious. Come back with the full product. I'm going to go over to um, the oven, put it in and bake it for about 15 minutes or until that egg is done. And then we'll be ready for breakfast. And breakfast is ready. We're gonna taste a little bit of this. You can see the eggs are done. Look at that, it's still steaming. You see that steam? It's hot. Mm. Now, that's a fast, delicious breakfast. Corn beef hash with egg. So delicious. This is hot. But if you bring it in close and look at it. This is a very quick breakfast that you can throw together. Enjoy it. Have fun. Get your corn beef, y'all. And have meals for three days, three meals, three weeks, three whatever. Uh, however big you get it, that's how many meals will last. But we are going to make lunch next, so stay tuned. Meantime, I need you to subscribe and like this video. Thank you. Well, I certainly have enjoyed cooking our corned beef and making up these delicious dishes. Uh, I really did enjoy the dinner that we had with our corned beef. And then we did the corned beef hash for breakfast. And now we have our corned beef sandwiches. And as you can see, they are so beautiful. I just want to tear into them right now, but I won't. I want to share with you though, what um, I put in them. I took the sliced corned beef and put it in a skillet and let it brown on each side and get really hot. And you can see the juice just sipping from it. And then uh, I have uh, some um, rye bread that I use because that's what they usually use with uh, corned beef sandwiches. But rye bread that was buttered on both sides, I browned them on each side in a cast iron skillet. And uh, I added some homemade sauerkraut to the sandwich. And uh, I use Swiss cheese, but you can use any kind of cheese that you want to, uh, cheese of your choice. And then we added, um, what you can do is use some sandwich bread. And I use some um, spicy mustard. Uh, you can use any kind of sandwich bread that you would like on it uh, that might fit your palate. But I have so enjoyed uh, figuring out how many ways can you eat corned beef and how many dishes can you make with corned beef. So this is our last dish. I hope you certainly have enjoyed it. Uh, I do want to ask you now to hit the subscribe button if you have not already subscribed to Sadie's Kitchen. And then go on over to the Facebook page and join Sadie's Kitchen Facebook group so we can just talk and have a conversation with each other. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, please. And I'll see you on the next video.